came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to set to account with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand pounds, and he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servants fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and gave him. And, and forgive him the debt. But the same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And taking him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and went and reported to their Lord for all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I will give you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servants as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers till he paid all his debt. So also, my heavenly Father, we do to every one of you. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Seventy 
here and was to go back to the sacrament of confession. And you are reminded confession is the sacrament of mercy. Confession is the sacrament of mercy. During that year, many booklets were written about mercy. The parables of mercy. The sounds of mercy. And it is not something that can grow old. And therefore we can again revisit those writings and ask ourselves, how are we receiving that mercy? God, from the moment of creation, and even after the fall of man, in Genesis chapter 3, God continues to forgive us. God listens to our cries. He listens to our sighs, even when we have sinned against Him. The children of Israel many times went against the Lord. They went and washed the idols. Remember when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai, carrying the two tablets that were of the law, and because they thought that Moses had stayed long up the mountain, what did the children of Israel do? They had made themselves what? A mountain calf and were washing the feet. And Moses was angry and even broke the commandments. But the Lord forgave them? Yes, he forgave them. So even from the Exodus experience, the children of Israel moving from Egypt. Now he was a free 
Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15, tells us that this young man came back to his senses. And now that reflecting, he could see his father's house. He could see the servants who were mere servants. They had no connection with his mother, but they were eating and having enough to spare. And he, the other son, is far away. Dejected, hopeless, and nobody is to him. So what did he do? He made a decision. What did he say? I shall arise and go back to my father. But that was not enough. And tell him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And we know when he went back to his father, his father. Did not even ask him when did you take all the money that I gave you. What happened, my son? He just went out, he embraced him and told him, Welcome back. Put him a ring on his finger, put shoes on his feet, telling me, I am resetting you to be my son. You belong here. A robe was put on him, and they made a big feast, and they had a great time. Because the son was lost and he was back. He was dead and now he was alive. Meaning, the Bible telling us when we are in sin, we are lost. Not only are we lost, but we are dead. But God reminds us. God welcomes us back to Him. The Lord's Prayer that we pray many times during the day was our prayerfulness. What we say. Forgive us our sins, but we forgive us. And therefore, it is not only for us to ask God to forgive us, but also to us that we are able to forgive us. And that is what the parable in the gospel is telling us. That the master forgave this person. For the great text, we are told that what he was forgiven was so much was so much, he owed the master 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents. And a talent was like the wages of one man, perhaps. And those were 10,000 talents. Well, the denarii, the denarii was a way to one day. And this other guy was only on how many? 100 dinar? Dinar. Well, he owed his master. Ten thousand talents. Yet he was forgiven. And after pleading, he was forgiven. But when he meets this servant, fellow servant, who owed him an ordinary, it is not something that was small, because if an ordinary is one day's wage, that means he was owed hundred days wage. That is not a little man, is it? Yet we do not see what had been forgiven. Only so what he had not been paid. My brothers and sisters, when we go before the Lord and ask him for forgiveness, what are we seeing? Are we seeing only what we are owed and not seeing what God has forgiven us? At the cross, Jesus has forgiven us. Jesus has cancelled our debt, and when our debt is cancelled, uh, we know that forgiveness is something that is freely given by the Lord. It is something that the Lord gives freely. He died on the cross without being coerced by him. And therefore, are we ready, my brother and my sister, to receive that forgiveness, that experience? That is really given on the cross. Dying for me and you without asking for me anything. 
she was walking with her boyfriend. And they were attacked by three men who had guns and knives. And they beat them up and slashed this young man and eventually shot him. And then they raped, they got raped with this gun. And Providence should not die. These three men were, were, were caught by the arms of the law. It was a tedious experience in the law courts, and two of them were condemned to die, one to uh, lie in imprisonment. And she was happy when this happened. But later on, when she was asked, Are you happy now that they're in prison? She was never happy. The only moment she was happy is when she was able to leave. Not to have vengeance because when they were being sentenced and they were being wanted, they were being told to kill us. Yes, that's what they deserve. They killed my boyfriend and they raped me. That was something that was in her heart and that vengeance had happened. But until she moved from vengeance to letting go, to asking for forgiveness from the Lord, then she was never free. And she said later, many, many years, many, many, many years later, it is only when she released these people from her heart that she was free. Not because they were condemned to death or condemned to imprisonment, but when she was able to release them from her heart. Brothers and sisters, forgiveness is a journey. Forgiveness is a spiritual journey. It is not vengeance. It is seeking God's mercy in our lives. In Lord, you want to look at our sins. Lord, who? Someone? Not on me, not on you. The one who has never seen, let him be the first one to throw what? To throw a stone. Today, as we look at forgiveness, the Jesus way, I'm inviting myself and all of you. Let us take this part of the spiritual journey of our hearts to seek not vengeance, but forgiveness. To embrace this freely given mercy of God.